these tourists are braving the winter chill to get the first glimpse of light falling on a sacred rock. For many here, climbing Uluru is out of the question. You wouldn't climb a, like a big Buddha if a, a Buddhist monk asked you not to do it, so it's the same thing for me. Pretty simple decision. We're good people and do what we're told, really, and, uh, you know, I don't know why anyone would climb it, to be honest. But Helen Norman, on holidays from southeast Queensland, is thinking of giving it a go. I'm undecided yet. I'll wait until I get there and just see what it's like, yeah. Why are you undecided? Because I'm not too sure how hard it's going to be. Um, and I'll see about the culture feeling I get when I get there. For decades, the traditional owners, the Anangu, have been trying to discourage tourists from climbing Uluru. They gave two years' notice of closing the climb, which comes into effect in October. Senior traditional owner Sammy Wilson says the Anangu need to protect traditional law and sacred information. Ayers Rock has become the haunt of tourists. The legends of its vanished custodians are kept alive by its present keeper. When tourists first started coming to the rock in the late 1950s, there was little, if any, acknowledgement that this place was part of a living culture. Originally, tourism companies or individuals just wanting to come to Uluru would have just come here and pretty much done their own thing. At times, the workmen seem to be plagued by bad luck in their efforts to gouge and scar the ancient monolith. The pressure in the pneumatic drill kept dropping and strong winds often threatened to blow them off the rock. The Anangu weren't consulted when the chain for climbers was drilled into the rock. I now place in the hands of the Uluru Katachuda Aboriginal Land Trust the title. <laughs> when ownership of Uluru was handed back to the Anangu in 1985, the traditional owners allowed the climb to continue. Why the change since the handback? Signs were put up more than a decade ago asking tourists not to climb out of respect for the traditional owners and warning of the dangers of an activity that has taken more than 35 lives. Looks like we're not going. It's not going to happen today. Helen Norman's decision was made for her. The climb was closed because of high winds, just when she thought she would do it. Now, you would have seen the signs here saying that traditional owners uh, don't want you to climb. Does that have any effect on you? No, not really. I think it's still part of Australia's nature and I'd like to have a go at it, yes. That sentiment was shared by many others waiting for the climb to open. I can appreciate the respect for their uh, spiritual areas, but uh, at the same time um, it's something that all Australians should have the right to do. It's quite a big uh, cultural thing in Australia, I guess. And, you know, because it's closing now, I think a lot of people have come out to think, you know, we should, we should climb it before it gets closed. What do you say to those people? By midday, the wind had died down and the climb was open. The Uluru climb is so sensitive, traditional owners have asked us not to film anyone walking on the rock. But just to the left of me, there's still a hundred or so people making their way down the steep descent. This is always a busy time of the year, but over the past few weeks especially, the number of climbers has been unprecedented. People are coming to Uluru to climb for the last time. 
So what we sort of see it as there is a spike of visitation now because more people are coming to climb. You know that climb is going to close down in October. Was that a reason why you're here now? Yes, I did do it as a child. Um, but yes, I thought it would be a good experience for my children. You know, we're religious people. We'd welcome anyone into our sacred areas with open arms and, and I believe the majority of people really would here as well. There's been a lot more people climbing the rock over the last few weeks because of the closure in October. How do you feel about that? Does that disappoint you? Well, sometimes I've been there, but I've done tour. And more people come, and more people come and tour. And the other people are going to be able to do it. And the other people are going to be able to do it. Sometimes people are asking me to go to Utah. I'm going to go to some school holiday. A lot of people love to come. The local tourist industry supports the climbing ban. Uluru Park manager Mike Rossi says he's expecting a small drop in tourist numbers after October, but overall tourism demand will remain strong. And a good example of that is at the moment it's 87% of people who come to Uluru don't actually climb. So while the numbers will drop a bit, um, we, we don't believe they're going to plateau, uh, you know, drop in a significant way. October 27th is the end of a controversial era and Sammy Wilson is looking forward to talking about something else. Judah media, media, Judah media, Judah media, Judah. I think I'm running out of story. I'm <laughs> celebrating, I think we're all welcome and go. <laughs> Where's the story? I already was talking about how many years, you know? Yeah. And tourists will continue to marvel at Uluru's beauty for years to come. The brilliance of the colour of this rock is unbelievable. And the sunset coming in, I'm not sure that there's anything that compares to the changing of the colours. You come here to say Uluru, <laughs> and the only time you can't say Uluru is when you're standing on top of Uluru. Like, what's the point of climbing it? <laughs>